Hi guys, James at Rampant Lion Reviews again for you today with another beer review. For this one, we are going to stick to Scotland and we're going to return to a brewery that has featured on the channel a good couple of times before. I've had some very, very nice beers from these guys over the years, so they are one of the breweries that I always keep an eye out for during my trips home to Scotland. For this one then, we are going to head through to Edinburgh and we're going to go to the south of the city, Lone Head, and we're having a look at another beer from Stuart Brewing. So this one is called the Hazy IPA. It comes in at 5% ABV, and as the name suggests, this one is a New England hazy style IPA. So, um, yeah, curious to see how this beer turns out. Um, this was another one that I picked up from my local Lido shop along with the Luminous Lights from 71 Brewing up in Dundee and also the Chocker Block at Imperial Style, which is from Williams Brothers, one of my very local breweries here in Clipmanninshire. But um, yeah, this is one of two beers that you'll see me review from Stuart Brewing during this cycle of Scottish beer reviews. The other one is a Coffee Stout and that will be the first dark beer actually that I reviewed from Stuart Brewing, which is quite exciting. But the last beer that I reviewed from these guys was the Double IPA version 2, and that was back in September 2019 apparently. Doesn't seem uh, like so long ago, but as you can maybe see if you watch that review, these guys have undergone a little bit of a rebrand, and I think that's very recent, but I have to say the new cans do look pretty snazzy actually, although the other artwork was pretty nice as well. Um, but my favourite beers that I've had from these guys over the years, the first one that springs to mind would be the Cap Eye, which I don't know if they still do but there was also the first world problems which is a belgian style ipa and then the other one would be the radical road which is one of their flagship beers actually but the thing that i've always enjoyed about stuart brewing is that they use a lot of kiwi hops i've always enjoyed a little bit of new zealand hop which you'll know if you've watched the channel regularly and this beer actually does have a fairly impressive hop profile on it as well but we'll talk about that later in the video but as i said always nice to return to stuart brewing nice to find something new from them and i hope that you guys enjoy my take on this beer as well. So yeah, let's see how we get on then. So as always with my reviews, I'll tell you a little bit about the brewery before we taste the beer. If you want to get straight to the tasting, just fast forward. All the usual links are in the video description below. That's the brewery website, the link to my other reviews that I've done from Stuart Brewing before. I think this is review number eight or something, and you will see more added to that in the near future. But there's all the usual social media down there. If you want to see more reviews, do please consider subscribing to the channel. The whole channel, of course, has a geography-based tagging system, so you can go into the homepage and search for beer based on country, city, state, county, province, prefecture, or whatever it is you're interested in. Do check out the playlist of beers from different countries. There is one there for all the Scottish beers that I've reviewed for you. That's being added to quite regularly at the moment because I am at home in the motherland. And as always, please do get in touch and let me know some of the other beers and breweries that you guys would like to see me review. It's always great to hear from you guys that are watching the videos and the support that you show the channel is hugely, hugely appreciated. So anyway, to tell you a little bit about Stuart Brewing then, on to my brewery notes. So Stuart Brewing, as I've told you before, was founded by Steve Stuart along with his wife Jo, and of course it takes its name from their surname. Uh, but Steve is a graduate of Harriet Watt University in Edinburgh and their he and their brewing programme, which is quite a popular route into craft brewing for a number of brewers. Um, but uh, he's worked for several breweries, including Bass Brewery in Ireland and then in Birmingham, and also for the Harpoon Brewery over in Boston in Massachusetts in America. But while working in Birmingham back in 1998, he built his first microbrewery, which I believe resided in his garage with the help of his father-in-law who owns a steel fabrication company and uh, that will save you a hell of a lot of money actually if you're going to start up your own brewery so that's probably one of the reasons why Stuart Brewing have always had a I can, a quite, uh, a, you know, a fairly big um, brewing capacity compared to some of the other breweries in Scotland, so that definitely helps for sure. Um, but um, basically, he wanted to return to Scotland, so he left his job with base with base brewing in Birmingham and uh, moved to Edinburgh back in 2002. But he started putting things in place to form his own company and uh, the production began in January of 2004 with all the original recipes having been developed uh, through trial brewing in Steve's own microbrewery so yeah pretty cool uh, but Steve basically worked to secure a bigger production facility and he eventually settled on a location in the Bilston Glen industrial estate in Lone Head to the south of Edinburgh but while this site was being completed a number of the beers were being brewed at the Strathaven brewery which is to the south of Glasgow if I'm remembering rightly kind of towards Hamilton actually um, but the first batch was produced in their own premises in late 2004 and uh, they continued to expand this brewery over the years but then in 2010 they moved to a larger unit within the same Bilston Glen industrial estate and they're still based in this one uh, but since foundation these guys have proved to be very very successful they've produced a number of uh, different beers actually and they've got their core range of beers which uh, is available in quite a few places throughout Scotland uh, but further expansion of the brewery is also planned 
for the fair in the near future. I think it was actually meant to take place uh, this year in 2020, but the whole COVID-19 situation, I think, put all those plans to, to sleep. And a lot of small companies like this have suffered through this whole pandemic. Um, but they do have two tap rooms these days. They've got one at the brewery itself, and then they've also got another one called Dockside Tap on Bernard Street in Leith. And that's somewhere that I do want to go and check out at some stage as well. That's definitely going to be an out and about video at some point. And if I could get Steve Stewart actually um, on the, the channel to do a Meet the Brewery interview with, that would be pretty cool. So we'll see about sorting that out at some time, uh, at some point in the future, maybe in February or in September when uh, when I'm home next. We'll, we'll see about that. I'll get in touch with these guys probably and ask them about that. But uh, as of January 2021, when I'm filming this review for you, these guys have produced 63 different kinds of beer. And uh, like I say, it's probably the IPAs that really makes these guys uh, stand out. They've produced some really nice examples of that style over the years, but I do need to make sure that I try a few different ones from them. They've got a number of golden ales and things like that. I'm not sure if they've ever produced... Uh, they probably will have at some stage, but I've not seen lager beers from these guys as, uh, as far as I can gather. But I will have a little look on the website pardon me and see what uh, what else I can find but um, yeah like I said a brewery that I always look out for and as I say my favourite beers would probably be uh, Capai, the Radical Road and the First World Problems I would really recommend that you have a go at those if you get the chance but the Hollywood is one that I do need to review at, uh, at some stage as well because that is quite a popular beer I've never tried that actually even on tap but um, yeah if you want to learn more about Stuart Brewing you can check out the brewery website you can follow them on Facebook and Instagram to keep up to date with all the latest goings on you can check out the Rate Beer and Untap pages as well to learn all about the different beers that they've done they've produced about 63 so far actually but um, yeah let's get on and actually have a taste of the beer then so I'll just let you have a little look at the artwork on this one before we open it up there you can see the Stuart Brewing symbol there which is quite nice and um, yeah it says on the side here hazy IPA unfined unfiltered basically and um, carrying a slight bitterness this juicy IPA has strong hits of both citrus and tropical fruits with a soft finish a re uh, Edinburgh's original craft brewery Stuart Brewing has been innovating and brewing great beers since 2004 so um, yeah looks pretty nice actually but uh, this beer I think only cost me about £1.80 or something like that from my local Lidl shop so um, yeah, 440 milliliter can this, and as I said, hopefully this turns out to be another very nice beer. So um, yeah, let's get this guy out, and we'll get on with the tasting then. A 5% New England Hazy IPA. I do have the hops and malt profile for this one. So um, yeah, this one is hopped with Magnum, Cascade, Rakao, Victoria's Secret, and Amarillo, and it's got a malt base of pale malt, oats, and wheat. So, um, yeah, should be pretty nice. All of those hops I am familiar with. Uh, Victoria's Secret from Australia. Um, Rakao from New Zealand, of course. It's a beautiful hop, Rakao, actually. And again, as I said, one of the main reasons why I've enjoyed the beers from these guys over the years has been the use of New Zealand hops. I rinsed, honestly, guys, I rinsed this glass just before I started filming. And look at that already. Oh, it's annoying. I, usually, I always clean these glasses thoroughly, but yeah... Sometimes the, you still get these uh, carbonation kind of sticking to it anyway. Really annoying. But um, yeah, Rakao, very interesting hop from New Zealand. About 10% alpha acid and it gives you, you know, this uh, sort of passion fruity and apricot-y kind of thing. It's an awesome, awesome hop that I first discovered back in uh, 2015 when I was in New Zealand, actually. Um, but Victoria's Secret, we know, is basically like the little, the little sister, little brother or whatever of Galaxy. Um, Magnum. It's a very popular bittering hop. It gives you a lovely spicy bitterness. Cascade is the original high alpha acid hop, 8% or so alpha acid, but grapefruit and kind of red fruity notes you'll get out of that. And Amarillo is a big, um, juicy, oily orange thing, about 12% alpha acid, if I remember correctly, and one of the kind of original uh, New England IPA, uh, sorry, one of the original uh, high alpha acid hops, actually. But yeah, I'm admiring the colour of this one, I have to say. So as you can see, this beer poured with about a half finger of a frothy, uh, I would say perfect white head. That's faded away to be a very kind of thin foamy layer, although there is an, an impressive lit amount of foam just around the um, the outside of the glass there. But yeah, one or two big bubbles sticking towards the side of the glass now. Quite a few of those ones that I showed you earlier have buggered off, basically. But um, yeah, this is quite a nice, rich, um, I would say medium, ambery coloured uh, New England IPA, this one. It does look um, very, very nice. Remember, the colour of your beers are dependent on two things. One, the type of malts that you use, and two, the length of the boil. The longer you boil the beer, 
uh, the, longer, the longer you boil the wort, I should say, sorry, uh, the more the sugars caramelise and thus it gives you a darker colour. So the malts that are in this one, you know, the pale malt, the oats and the wheat, this one would indicate that maybe this has undergone a slightly um, longer boil because to get this colour it would have to be you know, fairly um, caramelised actually, or it might just be a wheat leaning uh, New England IP. If you have a wheat one, it can be a little bit more amber. Um, if you bought, you know, even if you don't boil it all that long, from what I remember. But um, yeah, it certainly looks the part. This one. And uh, yeah, nothing overly surprising about this beer. It's not the soupiest and gloopiest of New England IPAs you'll come across, but at five percent, it's not going to be. Usually, as you go up the alcohol scale, you get more. Um, you know, you get more uh, haziness to them because of the higher oat and wheat content. But then again, I've had triple IPAs from like Russia and things like this that uh, are about the same level of haziness as this. So it just depends. It just depends on the ratio of malt and uh, hops and barley and things like this. But uh, yeah, it certainly looks the part for a New England hazy style IPA, this one. So let's have a closer look at the aroma and just see how we get on with this one. I think this is going to be pretty nice, actually. And yeah, um, straight away with this beer you get a lot of very nice, um, juicy, fruity character coming out of it. And that's what you expect, you know. Um, a lot of the Stuart beers that I've had before have been really nice and oily and fruity, and you do get a similar vibe out of this one. Um, so, yeah, the... Um, straight away with this one, it's all about the fruits, but we'll focus on the malty side of things first as we always do. So you can smell a nice kind of smooth white bready note to this beer. There is a good little bit of um, wheaty smoothness to this one as well. You can feel that the wheat just has a little bit of thickness to it in fairness, but you also get the nice big smooth oaty characters out of this beer as well. Um, but yeah, when you sugar the beer up, I think definitely more of the oatiness comes out. Um, but yeah, the wheat and the bitiness from the wheat is sitting there at the back of the nose as well. So it's quite... Um, it's quite uh, interesting on that uh, from that sense as well. Um, but yeah, nice little bit of wheaty bitiness in there. Soft white bread underneath and a wee bit of that kind of big oaty smoothness. You might get a little bit of kind of Werther's Original coming out of this beer. But um, yeah, you, the malt base is kind of what you would expect. It does have an impressive level of, of kind of thickness almost. You can smell that this beer, I think, is going to be quite thick. But for a 5% of the level of thickness you can smell in that malty side of things, it's pretty impressive actually. Um, but yeah, on the green side of things then, onto the hoppy side of the beer, I would say that this one is quite, um, it's quite, you know, it's quite well balanced in a sense, you're getting a bit of everything out of it. You can smell a little touch of earthiness in there, which you're always going to get. It's got a nice floral aromaticity to it, and I mean, most of the hops in this beer are pretty high alpha, so the lowest one I think would be Cascade at about 8%. I think Magnum usually sits around 10%, if I remember um, rightly, and Rakow, as I said, is 10 Amarillo tends to be about uh, about at twelve percent, if I remember it, and I think Victoria's Secret is roughly around the the same amount as that actually. Um, a number of the New Zealand hops are actually remarkably low alpha acid. Yet is like four percent alpha acid or something crazy like that. Um, so a lot of these New Zealand hops can give you you know a hell of a fruity character with a very low alpha acid uh, rating, but or low alpha acid content I should say. But yeah, the the green side of this beer for me, it's got a nice little bit of floral aromaticity out of it. Um, but I would say the more that I smell of it, it's not madly spicy. There is a wee bit of spice to it, but then it's got a little bit of a lighter kind of uh, grassiness in there as well. So yeah, that's another interesting thing about this one. So the green side of this beer is quite nice and quite smooth and straight up in a sense. But yeah, you've got some lovely um, juicy fruity characters to this one, and um, it definitely goes together um, very, very nicely. So. Um, yeah, the fruity side of the beer for me, you can definitely smell some of that big oily orange amarillo in there and, you know, as you'll know if you've watched my channel, I'm a sucker for orangey leaning IPAs, but um, yeah, you can definitely smell a big bit of that oily orangey thing coming out of it. There's a nice little bit of a kind of passion fruity um, note in there as well, um, from, yeah, definitely a nice little bit of a passion fruity character from the Rakal for sure. It does come across as quite soft and you can pick up um, the apricots in there as well. But I guess some of the passion fruit in this beer will be coming from the... Yeah, you can get the more pungent passion fruit in as well. I would be thinking that that comes from the Victoria's Secret. But overall, this beer really appears to be very kind of smooth 
and juicy and you can almost just smell a little bit of those figgy kind of red fruity notes from the Cascade as well. Cascade for me is a very distinctive hop because one of my local breweries uh, Harveston, one of the beers that I always really enjoyed was the Shahalian Lager Beer and um, it was basically a Pilsner that and it was hopped with them um, with Cascade so that's been a beer that's always kind of stuck out to me to be honest so um, yeah the fruity side of this beer for me is very very nice juicy oily orangey and with a lot of soft uh, kind of soft tropical fruit in there passion fruit as I said yeah passion fruit as I said um, some really nice um, how would we say some very very nice um, brain's not working, some very very nice kind of soft apricots and things like that, maybe a little bit of pineapple as well actually coming out of it and then you've got that you know, that big juicy oily orange amarillo, passion fruit, uh, apricots, pineapple and then a big oily amarillo orange note out of it. So yeah, take a little bit of time and enjoy the aroma of this one before you get stuck in, it does have a fairly impressive level of aroma when you consider that it's only a 5%er. So um, yeah, let's have a look at this one then and see how we get on. This one is simply called Hazy IPA, 5% New England IPA from Stuart Brewing through in Lone Head to the south of Edinburgh. Let's get stuck in. Slanja, Skull, cheers. Oh yeah, that's pretty damn nice actually. Very drinkable as well, very very drinkable I would say as well. Um, so yeah, where to start with this one? Um, it does come across in some ways like um, like a paleo. And yeah, when it's down, I had this debate with the, the luminous lights, which I filmed before this one. The one thing that's always... Um, caught me about these sort of five percent beers that they're saying are IPAs. Um, you know, I guess the technical difference between the, the question for me would be where does the session IPA thing begin? Because you don't really see that on any of these beers. I mean, maybe they're not using the term session IPA in. Uh, pardon me, in Scotland, if you like, just um, to try and you know almost discourage um, heavy drinking or whatever, because that is a big thing here. So I wonder if the 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 reasoning behind not calling this a session IPA is um, is something to do with that. But at the same time, there is also, um, you could also say, oh, maybe this is a paleo. But remember, paleo IPA, double IPA and barley wine, they're all related to each other by the hop to malt ratio. So the hop to malt ratio changes as you go up the scale of these beers. So I wonder, I've, I've said this in the other reviews as well, I wonder if these lower alcohol, um, these lower alcohol, IPAs that we're getting, if it's the same malt to hop ratio as a regular IPA and they've just taken the malt content down so the alcohol doesn't go as high. I wonder if that's what they're doing because um, usually if you've got a sort of 5% beer I would expect it to either be termed a session IPA or a paleo but the technical difference I would think between session IPA and paleo would be the malt to hop ratio because it is it is the ratio is different but if they're doing low alcohol IPAs the, the ratio will be the same. Um, so yeah, I'm, I'm curious about that. I wonder why um, these sort of beers are not being termed session IPAs in Scotland. Um, it, of course the other thing is, um, it could be if this beer is intended for the supermarkets it could just be a marketing decision, I don't know. But the main question of course should be whether the beer is good and it certainly is a pretty nice one. Yeah. But yeah, um, so straight away with this beer then, let's break down the flavour for you. Um, you get a nice kind of pale malty quality, just blanketing the middle of your tongue. Um, so yeah, it has a little bit of crispness to this, um, to, to the middle of your palate as well. It does have a little bit of crispness to it, this beer, which I quite like. Um, so yeah, I think this one is fairly barley malt leaning, to be honest with you. And I think the wheat has a fair presence as well. I think the oats do take a little bit of a back seat, but they are definitely there. So yeah, middle third of your palate, you've got a little bit of a kind of barley malt, uh, kind of soft pale malty quality there. You can feel that just blanket in the middle of your tongue. Uh, as you go on to the back third of your palate, you can feel the wheatiness in there. And it just sort of thickens out the beer. So on that back third of your palate, you can feel that there is a really um, slightly thicker wheat quality to this one. It's got a little bit of bitiness at the very back of the palate. But as you come further forward, it's de it definitely kind of smoothens out a little bit. 
So um, yeah, you can feel the, th the slightly thicker character on that back third of your palate. You do get a wee bit of graininess out of this beer as well, the further that you go into the um, the aftertaste as well, particularly on that border between uh, middle third and back third of your palate. There is a wee touch of graininess there, but um, yeah. In the middle third of your palate, like I say, soft and almost quite crisp white bready character, but as you move towards the uh, the front half of that middle third of your palate, you can feel the kind of smoother oaty qualities coming out of this one. The oaks come out a little bit uh, later on in the, the taste there, but I would say that this is really a wheaty and barley malt leaning uh, New England IPA for me. The oats definitely take a bit of a back seat in this one for me. Um, but yeah, it's quite straight shooting to be honest with you and when it's a five percenter you would kind of expect that it, um, it is going to be yeah, just straight, you know, as I say, straight shooting in that sense. But uh, I certainly like what they're doing with this one. This is definitely designed just to be a sort of sessionable IPA. There's no doubt in my mind about that. It is lighter than quite a few of the other ones that I've had from these guys. Although in fairness, if I remember rightly, quite a few of the Stuart Brewing beers are, you know, fairly low in alcohol content, actually. Um, but they always packed a, a good bit of flavour. And this beer certainly carries on that kind of mantra. You like. But yeah, on the hoppy side of things then, back corners of the palate there's definitely a wee bit of earthiness there which I think will be down to the magnum. As you move further forward it has a little bit of um, floral aromaticity and as you reach the kind of front corners of the palate there's a good little bit of kind of more spicy quality to it there but that's the magnum that's giving you that for sure. Probably the magnum and the cascade have been used as the early edition hops in this one. Um, remember when you when you're talking about the boil of your beer, if you add the hops in the beginning, they're going to give you all their kind of bittering qualities. But if you add them gradually over the length of the boil, they're going to they're going to at, at later times they're going to give you more of a flavour and aroma quality and. Uh, and that's the kind of trade-off that you get. So probably the Rakal, the Amarillo, and the Victoria's Secret are the late edition hops. Maybe Cascade has been used as a a late edition hop as well, but I would suspect that's what's going on. Normally an IP like this would be a 70 to 90 uh, minute boil, but yeah, maybe from the colour of this one I do wonder if it's a wee bit longer, right enough. But yeah, the um, the fruity side of this beer I think is really nice, but round the kind of front curve of your palate you get a nice little bit of a lighter grassiness in there, but I would say the green component of the beer leans towards that floral aromatic component to be honest with you. The green side of the beer definitely is a little bit more, um, it is quite aromatic but at the same time it does have a little bit of spiciness uh, there as well. But on the front third of your palate, as I always tell you, you've got that nice little oily bubble where those juicy fruity esters just roll their way out of the beer and this one kind of has everything you'd expect if you know these hops. So if you go towards the back of the front third of your palate, you've got a more kind of pungent passion fruit, you know, and as you move further forward, that gradually fades away a bit. This will be coming from both the Rakal and from the Victoria's Secret, but as you move further forward, there's a little bit of, um, there is a little bit of a more kind of apricotty base there, although there's not too much of that, to be honest with you. It takes, that comes out a little bit more in the aftertaste for me, and maybe there's a wee bit of pineapple on the front of the palate too. Those are the elements from both the Victoria's Secret and the, um, and the, uh, the Rakal in this one, which is quite good. Um, but yeah, this one, I think, goes together very, very well. So yeah, the more that I drink of this beer too, the more it has um, a nice kind of oily um, orange thing to it as well. So you get the Amarillo coming out of this beer a little bit later on as well, which is uh, which is really nice. Amarillo was always one of my favourite hops back in the day, and it does seem to be getting a little bit more attention again, which is nice. It was kind of dropped in favour of Mosaic quite often recently. Um, but yeah, this beer I think is is pretty damn solid and it does develop a little bit more bitterness I think the um, the further that you go into the aftertaste. More and more of the magnum kind of spicy notes coming out of it but I think you can feel the cascade coming out of this beer a little bit as well. You can feel a little bit of that almost kind of slightly figgy note and some of the darker grapefruit as well coming out on that front third of your palate as well. So this one, for a New England IP, it does have a wee bit more kind of bite to it from hoppy bitterness. I wouldn't be surprised if this beer's got maybe got maybe 40 or so IBUs in it. Um, but uh, yeah, it's certainly very, very nicely done. I do remember that the double IPA version too had a little bit more bitterness um, to it as well, actually. 
come to think of it. So yeah, um, Stuart Brewing do like a little bit of bitterness in their beers for sure, and that's maybe one of the reasons why I've enjoyed them as well. Um, but this is this is certainly a solid, solid beer. This one, and I mean, for what was that about uh, about one pound eighty a can or one seventy five or something? Um, that is that is pretty damn impressive actually. So yeah, very drinkable beer in my mind, and the flavour profile is pretty solid. It is what you'd expect from a kind of lower alcohol uh, New England IPA. So thumbs up to Stuart Brewing for this one. Another another very very solid beer from them actually. I wish I could get a hold of these a little bit more regularly. Um, but Stuart Brewing were always hard to get a hold of. You really had to go through to Edinburgh to get a hold of uh, of their beers, although I think they're in Sainsbury's now and uh, Lido's and Aldi get random ones from them too. But um, yeah, in terms of the uh, the mouthfeel then, I think we've covered the flavour profile pretty in depth there, um, but yeah, in terms of the mouthfeel, I'd say that it's pretty, it's kind of at the bottom end of mid-bodied, the carbonation does have a wee bit of crispness to it, but I think the bitterness is kind of helping that as well, but it does feel again quite clean. Scottish tap water, as I keep telling you, we've got very, very good water here in Scotland that we're very, very proud of, um, but yeah, I think about 50 IBUs from this one. This one does feel a little bit more bitter, in honesty. Um, let's just see, does it have a canned on date? Because sometimes, of course, these beers can feel a little bit more yeah, bitter. But I th and maybe this, it looks actually, it says it's the 14th of December 2021. I would assume that this would have a year on it. So maybe this has been canned fairly recently, and that's why it feels um, quite bitter, actually. Maybe that's the main reason. So, um, yeah, maybe I'm drinking this one very, very fresh, actually. Maybe the bitterness will um, drop off a little bit. Because, um, of course, in supermarkets they will sit, generally speaking, they will sit for a wee while. Because um, supermarkets just, you know, they don't have the same kind of knowledge about craft beer as your regular beer shops and stuff. But, um, yeah, I think it's a, it's a, it's a really nice... Um, it, it, yeah, it's a very nice kind of bitterness that you get with this beer, and Stuart Brewing always liked that. So I think about 50 IBUs, to be honest with you. Um, like I said, the malt base for me has a little bit of crispness to it, a little bit of graininess comes out at later too, but it's got a smooth kind of breadiness and wheatiness to it as well, um, and the fruitiness is nice and, and quite juicy too. But it's a very, very drinkable beer, this one, and I think a very nice example of a low alcohol New England what, hazy IPA, whatever you want to call it. So yeah, thumbs up to Stuart Brewing for this one. I think that's a good place to kind of round off this review. So yeah, this beer was simply called Hazy IPA, 5% ABV, New England Hazy IPA, whatever you want to call it, from Stuart Brewing in Lone Head to the south of Edinburgh. Um, definitely a very good buy from Lidl's if you can get a hold of it and uh, you know get a can of this, get a can of the Luminous Lights, do a little bit of a comparison and uh, you are in for a little bit of a treat there. It's cool to see that Lidl's are stocking you know, a few lower alcohol um, IPAs such as this one and... Uh, and uh, Luminous Lights too. So yeah, great stuff from Stuart Brewing once again. So yeah, as I said, there will be one more review from these guys in this cycle of Scottish beer reviews, so keep an eye out for that. I'm looking forward to that, my first dark beer from them actually. So yeah, that will be, it's the Affogato Stout if I remember rightly. But um, yeah, let's leave it there. Once again, thank you for watching my beer reviews. Until the next time, please like, subscribe, share all the usual YouTube stuff. Let me know your own thoughts on this beer in the comment section below. Let me know what your favourite beers are from Stuart Brewing. We will return to these guys very, very soon as I mentioned. And uh, yeah, thank you again for watching. So slange out school, cheers. Make sure you check out Stuart Brewing from Edinburgh. First World Problems, Cap High and um, the Radical Road would be my recommendations. Till the next time, slange out school and cheers.